All right, guys, we have a bit of a Sunday project today, me and my cousin Landon are doing here. Um, as you guys know, this is my current computer build. We've got the awesome water cooling. I don't know if you guys saw the video I posted probably about two years ago of me installing this. I've added a new graphics card and a new uh, you know, power supply since then and a new solid state drive. But other than that, everything stayed pretty much the same, but we have to take out this massive radiator you guys can see up here. It connects to three fans on the top. And then we're also going to have to take out what right here, which is called the reservoir, which holds the water, and then the pump, and then all the clamps that are going on to all of our water cooling, uh, the, you know, the CPU block, and then the radiator up here. And then what we're going to be doing is currently, if you guys speak computer, we have it at 2600K in here. It's an Intel processor. And we're going to be replacing it with their Intel's 8-core processor that just came out about a month ago, and the brand new DDR4 RAM. I got 16 gigs of it with a Hyper T4 uh, cooler, and then the X99 Deluxe motherboard so I will see you guys in just a second okay so we managed to take out the entire uh, water cooling loop so as you guys can see these were the three fans that were connected to the radiator and look at how dusty they are two years of beasting and feasting and this is what happened so I want to show you guys what the uh, the radiator looks like so look at this this is why you should always take your radiator out at least every six months if you have a custom water cooling loop or your fans. Make sure you always clean out your computer. So this is the water cooling block. And this right here is the thermal paste that goes and connects to the top of the CPU. And that kind of makes it so that it can uh, disperse heat better. So as you guys can see, there's all the water is still connected to this. So now we get to drain this and we're not even going to touch the water cooling anymore. We're going to go straight back to the Hyper T4 fan and cooler. And I'll show you guys how that works. So we'll see you guys again in just another second. All right, guys, this is it. This thing costs $1,000, the Intel Core i7-5960X. This is the Intel 8-core processor that just came out, the Haswell E-Series. So it's actually a lot smaller in comparison to how I had it on the camera. So what we're going to do here is we're going to open this bad boy up. And it's kind of difficult because, uh, yeah, I'm using one hand to do it. And my cousin is sitting over there doing nothing. Not helping me. Yeah, oops, oops. That's what you get for being lazy. All right, I got it, don't worry. I didn't need your help in the first place. Gosh dang it. All right, so don't worry guys, I've properly grounded myself. I'm sure I got a lot of freaking tech guys in here freaking out right now. So this is what you wanna do when you install a processor. You see that little golden arrow right there in the top right? It's kinda of hard to see because the camera's not focusing, but it's right there in the top right. There's another little arrow. Let's see if we can find it. It is, okay, here it is, right there. That little arrow right there. Wanna make sure that you always match those two corners. Because if you don't, you're pretty much going to break the entire processor. So don't do that. These are expensive, okay? And you also want to make sure not to touch the top because you don't want to get your, uh, your, you know, your skin oils on it. So I made sure to be very careful about doing that as well. All right, so now we got to clamp this sucker down. Now, this is the interesting part. This thing is really crazy, actually. I've actually never really worked one of these. Is so what you do is I think this one, yeah, it goes like this. So it's so what you do. This one's weird because this socket series is very different. It's the Intel 2011 and then it's like dash, you know, three. So it's kind of weird. I've never actually had to work with one of these. So anyways, this one's going to hold this in. I want you to push it all the way down. It always feels like you're going to break it. It's just like, because it holds it in so sturdy-like. And I just, I, just, I just touched it. I said not to do that. It's okay. I'll get some rubbing alcohol and we'll clean it off. But these clamps, like, it almost looks like you're going to break it with how hard the pressure is. Like, this thing holds it in so tight and so secure. So anyways, all right. We are getting to the next step, and now we are going to be installing this awesome uh, CPU cooler that's going to be going on the top of this, and then I will get to that in just a second. All right, so when applying thermal paste to your processor, typically you want to do no bigger than about a bead of rice. I did mine a little bit bigger, but it shouldn't cause any insulation issues between the uh, heat dispersion of the heat sink, which is right here. So this is the base of the heat sink. So basically what you're going to do is once you put this on top of this, it's gonna spread it manually. So you don't wanna spread it by, you know, you don't wanna spread it with your hands. You wanna let it spread naturally with the, uh, the heat sink itself. So just keep that in mind if you guys are ever building computers. Okay, since the last little clip we showed you guys, it's probably been about two hours or so getting every th three hours, you think? Yeah. Yeah, look at this. I mean, look at how much the sun has set. Like, it's it's getting a lot darker than it just was. Okay, so, all right, we have the uh, heat sink installed now. We've got a push-pull configuration. So, all the air is going to get sucked from this way and come all the way out here. So, it's going to be like three fans all moving air this way and out the fan in an exhaust-type fashion. We have the new X99 Asus motherboard installed. We have the uh, RAM installed. I know it looks kind of weird, but this is how the RAM is supposed to go on these types some other boards I looked it up but actually if I didn't look it up I would have put them side by side but if you want to have them run into a quad channel 
then you have to install them this way. And then you, as you guys can see, you got the graphics card installed. And then, uh, so not much has changed. I know a lot of you guys out there who are really good with wiring are probably going to freak out and think, oh my God, your computer looks so messy. And it really does. I just don't have the time nor the want to fix it all up. But I think overall, it looks really good. It looks very nice. Without having that radiator and the three fans at the top, it's just, you know, it's a lot more solid. Um, and it's just, I don't know, it's a lot more spacey. And I like it. But as you can see, there's a lot of wiring management on the back here that I need to fix before we can get started. But after I fix this and put the panel back on the back, we can turn her on. I'm super excited. All right, so here's the final moment to see if everything boots up. Everything's plugged up in the back. It's an absolute wreck, but here it is, all right. Oh, here it is, yes. Okay, so good thing is motherboard's turning on. Let's go over here to the command station, which I think I, I haven't showed anybody what this looks like yet online. So you guys can see I got the three monitors set up. Keyboard's turning on. Good, good sign. Looks like we're getting, yeah, here we go. We've got the Asus logos popping up on two out of three of the monitors. It's detecting all my hard drives right down here. Let's see. Yep, it's detecting all of them. So it's got the SSD. It's got my three hard drives. It's got everything. So I guess now we uh, enter F1 to run the setup and see how this goes. All right, guys, and it's all installed. Everything's working. Looks like all my recording software's up to date. I've probably got some things to uninstall um, from the old motherboard drivers and all that stuff like that. But other than that, everything is working great. Super excited. But the one downside is that the RAM stick, one of them is bad. So I only have 12 gigabytes of RAM right now instead of 16 like I used to. So I'll probably have to RMA that, which stands for Return to Manufacturer Authorization. I'll get that sent back and get some more. Um, but other than that, everything's awesome. If you guys want to see the parts I have exactly, look down below. I've got links to Amazon. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this little PC uh, building vlog. And if you guys did, leave a like down below. Let me know if you guys would like to see a part two of where I show off my setup and stuff like that once I clean it up a little bit, of course. Um, but, you know, have an awesome day. Goodbye, guys.